Want to know if your B2B marketing efforts are actually paying off? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to calculate the ROI for a B2B marketing campaign. So let's jump in. Okay, if you Google what are the top challenges that B2B marketers face, consistently in the top three is going to be, how do I measure the ROI from my B2B marketing? The reason why I think it's so difficult is because what a lot of marketers try and do is measure the return on a single channel. So they, they want to know what's the ROI from my B2B SEO or my social media or email marketing. The challenge is that all of these channels work together to help the buyer along their journey to becoming a lead and then moving on to becoming a customer. And so you might have some blog post content out there that's ranking really well in organic search. And as a potential customer, I might come along and try and figure out, how, you know, what is this problem that I'm dealing with? And so I start to Google around looking, you know, to really articulate and define what my problem is. And I come across your blog post. Now, that might be the first touch point that I have with your, with your company is I read that post and I think, oh, that's exactly what I'm struggling with. Yeah, great. Now I know the problem. And so as a buyer, I'm in the awareness stage. I'm starting to become aware of what my problem is and I've managed to define it. At that point, I may just leave and not take an action on your website, but I now know who you are and I have consumed the content. And so I'm kind of interested. And now as I'm looking around for a solution to that problem, because now I know what the problem is, I just need to know what are the solutions available. I go back to Google, as most people do, and I start to search for how do I solve this problem? And your Google ad pops up with an ebook that tells me exactly what the solutions are and really educates me on, on those options. So I go to your website again. I'm like, oh, I've been here before. I download your ebook. Now you've got my email address because in, in order for me to get the ebook, I had to give you my email. And I go away and I read that guide. I'm like, this is really great information. And then two days later, you follow up with an email with a really great offer to jump on a strategy call or have a catch up or get a free demo or whatever it is. And I see that email in my inbox and I'm like, you know what? Yeah, let's, let's do this. And so I've moved now into the decision stage where now I'm evaluating vendors in order to make a purchase decision. And so the question is, at what point do you attribute the conversion of that lead? Is it the email campaign, which I read and then booked in a demo? Or is it the organic post that showed up when I was looking initially to solve my problem? So do you attribute the lead to first click attribution, which is SEO? Or do you attribute it to the last click, which is the email marketing? And what about the Google Ads? Because that played a really important part within that whole process, right? Because that's where I got the ebook. The answer is they're all super important. And this is where the challenge lies in being able to determine the ROI from an individual channel because they all work in tandem to assist the buyer along their journey. So it's, it's hard to say what's the ROI of my SEO because it was everything. That's what showed up at the start. And it's hard to say, well, what's the ROI of my email marketing? Well, it's everything because that's the thing that got the person to convert. And then what about Google Ads? Well, yeah, that's everything because that's where they, that helped them along the journey. So you could get their email address. It's all one big orchestra. And so the way that we go about measuring ROI for customers at my agency, Yo Media, is we look at three things. We look at how much did you invest in the marketing campaign? How much did it return in sales? And what was the gross profit on that? And so the reason we look at the entire thing is because it's really difficult to segment out individual channels. So we want to know, well, what's the one number that I can report to or that you as a marketer can report to your board of directors or your CEO or your CMO? Um, what's that one number that, I, that you can say, hey, our marketing is working and it's delivering us a positive ROI and here's the return that it's giving us. So let's break it down. So the first thing you want to look at is obviously your time frame. Like, at, what do you want to measure the ROI? What time frame do you want to measure the ROI over? Um, depending on your sales cycle. So if you if it's a quick sales cycle, like 30 days, you may want to measure the ROI for the quarter. If it's a longer sales cycle, like 180 days, then you may want to measure it for either the six months or the entire year. So let's run through an example, some quick maths. I'll do the maths so you don't have to think. Let's say you invest 100 grand in marketing over the year. And that's spread across SEO, Google Ads, um, LinkedIn marketing, social media stuff, both organic and paid, 
um, email marketing, content development, web design, sales funnels, things like that, right? So you've invested 100 grand in your marketing. And that 100 grand has generated a million dollars in closed business revenue directly attributed to those channels and that marketing activity. So you spend 100 grand, you got a million bucks back. Next thing you want to do is apply the gross profit margin of your business to the sales. So you want to work out how much gross profit did we actually make off the, that million dollar sales. And so let's say your gross profit margin is 40%. So you go, okay, cool. So we spent 100 grand to get $400,000 in gross profit, right? So my return on investment is four, four times, right? I spent a dollar and I got back four. So I spent 100 grand, I got back 400 grand. Now you might say, well, why do you use gross profit? Why would you just not use the you know net profit or your EBIT? And the answer to that is, Generally, most businesses can take on more customers without having to increase their infrastructure substantially. So, you know, you generally are probably not going to have to upgrade your office um, or pay more rent or pay more on your internet bill or, you know, pay more expenses, day-to-day -day expenses. All of that infrastructure is already set up. You're already serving customers. It's there. And so as you bring on more customers, that doesn't necessarily increase. So you can kind of ignore that. Gross profit, on the other hand, takes into consideration all the inputs that went into creating that service or that product. And so that's variable. So you want to take that into consideration because the more you sell, you know, the more you're going to have to pay either to hire more staff because if you're a service company, your staff wages should be included in that gross profit. So it should be revenue less your direct costs, which one of those line items should be staff expenses because without them, you can't produce that service and then you have your gross profit. So it's really the gross profit that's going to matter more because if you're marketing and it's producing that return, that gross profit, that gross profit is pretty much going to flow straight through to the bottom line because, as I said, you're not going to have to generally increase your expenses or your business infrastructure in order to handle that. It, look, you may have to, but it will be incremental, so it won't really matter. So that's why we use gross profit as a figure. So you might say, okay, well, Four to one. So we've invested 100 grand. We've got $400,000 in gross profit. Is that a good deal? Absolutely, it's a good deal. It's basically a vending machine. And you want to put as much money as you can into that vending machine to continue to get those dollars out of it. Now, if your gross profit um, is still, let's say it's still 40%, you invested 100 grand, but then you only generated, you know, $50,000 in gross profit. Well, you might think, Mm, that's not a good deal because I spent $100,000 and I only got 50 back. So you actually net loss of $50,000 there. So that's why, we, that's, that's why we use gross profit. That's the easiest way that I've come across in B2B marketing to measure the ROI of your marketing efforts. The next question is, well, how, how do you measure the performance of each individual channel? Because you want to know, like, are we wasting money on Google Ads? Are we wasting money on our organic social? Like you want to know if they're actually working to deliver and play a part in delivering that ROI for you. Um, and so that's where other metrics might come into it. You might say, well, okay, we've sent all these blog posts live um, in organic search. Um, we're getting a lot of good rankings. Is it producing traffic to the website? And are, if we run a first click attribution report out of say Google Analytics, um, so all the leads that came through, Generally, you'll report those on last click attribution. So it was like, what was the last thing that happened before that person became a lead? And a lot of the credit is given to that marketing channel. But in Google Analytics, you can obviously run your first click attribution report and say, okay, but of all those leads that come in, what was the first interaction that they have with our website? And just have a look at that because you want to see, you know, at the front end, is our organic search stuff bringing in um, or at least getting eyeballs on potential customers that are then becoming leads down the track through maybe other marketing sources that we have out there. Um, so there's a lot of performance metrics you can look at at each channel. Um, obviously, you want to keep a finger on the pulse there. But as far as the financial return on investment that you get from a marketing campaign in B2B land should be looked at as its entirety and reported as one number. So at least you know all of our efforts are going towards you know, either producing a really great return or they're not working and we need to tweak something. And then you can start to really drill down into the individual channels and work out, are these individual channels contributing to the buyer along their journey and helping us increase the number of leads and therefore the number of sales that we're getting. So that's it. Stay tuned for more. And if you have any questions, just flick me a message. Cheers.